Millennia, a brand new 4X game coming to challenge the king of this genre, Civilization. And when a brand new title comes into this genre, we have to ask the same question, even if developers don't like it. Is this just a crappy Civ clone? Or is it something else? Well, in this video, I'll go over a campaign from start to victory, going over my favorite aspects of this game, as well as things I do not like. And in the end, give my honest overall opinion and rating of this game out of 10. I should mention that this is not my first game of Millennia, and I have been playing this for the last couple of weeks, as I want to give you guys a full gameplay experience and preview with knowledge of the game and not just some half-baked first impression. I also have extensive experience with 4X games going back to Civilization 3, the game that got me into historic games and 4X genre in general. I still vividly remember watching my dad play as Abu Bakr of the Arabs on the hardest difficulty taking on tanks with Ansar warriors. Those were the days, man. And if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. So without further ado, let's get into the gameplay. Uh, many of you guys may have been seeing some ads about it or played the demo that came out in February. And the more I play this game, the more I've been getting into it. And you'd actually be surprised to know that no, this isn't just a Civ clone. It actually has a lot of very unique mechanics and gameplay aspects to it. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's create a new game. Something very different to Civilization games, actually reminiscent of Civilization 2, very old school game. Yes, I've played Civilization 2 before. There are no unique units. Well, there are, we will see those throughout the game, but they're not the way they work like in Civilization, where it's just associated with the Civ. As a matter of fact, the only thing your Civilization choice does is change your city names. If you are a Civ player, you might not like, like that at all. Um, I initially did not like that, but I actually like how unique units work in this game. Unique units and wonders actually work in this game. Unfortunately, there are no Arabs. That's actually one of my biggest disappointments in this game. There are no Arabs that I can play in Larpaz. The closest thing is the Ottoman Empire, which is cool, I guess, but I'm just going to go with random. And we can choose our starting bonus. Uh, we're going to use Innovation as our starting bonus. We'll talk more about exactly why I chose this later. Um, of course, you can choose so many different things. You can do discounted settlers. You could do discounted pioneers. You could do um, Vassal Start with Prosperity. You could do um, Non-Combatants Have Extra Movement. Le leader Units Have Plus Tactics. Um, you can even pick a starting unit. Editor Habibi here. I actually now prefer either the Starting Scout or doing the Starting Influence Regional Bonus. Um, I'll talk about more of that in my next upcoming Millennial video. Yes, I have another Millennial video coming out next week. And so... This works out when our capital is actually Chicago. So your starting city name, there isn't like a capital city name to start. Um, and we do start with two warriors and Chicago is our capital. Heck yeah. So with the starting two uh, units here, uh, the, the warrior units, they're not really the best at scouting. Actually, the best unit for scouting is the scout cavalry. Later, this turns into an explorer. Um, and I'm actually going to do that as my first production. I'm going to start by building it. You can also see some other buildings we can build, like a town center, which gives us government XP, a dolmen, which gives us influence, which makes our city limits grow faster, um, and palisade walls, which defend our city. And much like uh, games like Civ 5, our, our cities actually have their own defense mechanics. Um, they have basically like an army that stays inside the city that you can never move out. And you can make them stronger by giving them towers, by giving them walls, by giving them a keep, by giving them armory, stuff like that throughout the game. Research is very straightforward in this game. Incredibly straightforward. Um, you have five choices per age. Um, you do you can do all of them, but once you do three, you can advance to the next age. And if you're the first person to advance to the next age, you make the entire game progress into that age. And later on, there's different age bonuses that we will go through when we get to that point. Right now in the Age of Stone, the only age after Age of Stone is Age of Bronze. To start, I'm going to go with scouting first. I like to scout a lot. Um, I like to use these first starting warriors to just scout our surroundings. Then we will combine them together to go clear some barbarian camps. Uh, while we go for scouting. A key thing about scouting is that it gives you 
um, a scout unit in your homeland. So for free, a scout. And I like to go to three scouts because I think that scouting is really important because not only will we be able to see where the barbarian camps are, we can also see these right here, tribal camps. And tribal camps give us different bonuses. We can get uh, government XP, warfare XP. And these different XP can be used uh, on different things throughout the game. I'm going to go for government XP to start because we can boost our tribal government, which is the government type that we have. Yes, we can change our government type throughout the game. Uh, but starting as a tribe, we're going to go for the food bonus to start. Then after that, we can get knowledge, which is tech technology. And I'm going to ignore this. I've never used this. Spawns a warband in your selected capital vassal or outpost. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Don't need that. I think that's a waste. I'm going to just continue to explore. I don't want to get my warriors out too far because they're going to be quite important to deal with the barbarian camps, as we already mentioned. And I do like playing very aggressive. I'm very aggressive in this game. I like killing the AIs and also the, the, the neutral cities. And we can actually see our first barbarian here. We're going to ignore him for now. I don't want to engage him. Um, we do want to actually have our stack together. As you can see right here, we can have multiple units in the same stack together. And it can get increased with technology. As we progress, we can get more troops in the same stack. And we can actually make army compositions. Actually, one thing about combat in this game is that it's more reminiscent of games like Heroes and Might and Magic and less about games like Civilization. And that innovation bonus that we got, innovation um, right here is we've been accumulating innovation and you don't actually accumulate innovation unless you get the innovation bonus. Every time you accumulate uh, innovation, enough innovation, you have a random chance per turn to get an innovation. What is innovation? It could be a boost to one of your cities. It could be a unique uh, building that you can build in your cities. It could be a unique unit, so like a special unit that you can build in all your cities. Or it could be a wonder that you can build. So I really like innovation because it, it makes us develop our nation throughout time. We can get, um, you know, we can get a unique unit that, you know, one civilization had in real life. We can get it as the Americans. Uh, with this culture bonus, we're actually going to make our first town. Um... There is different tiles right here. We can see all the hills and we can actually see where our pops are. We have two pops. One's on the scrubland right here. And we can actually make the scrubland better once we have more innovation points. There's no worker unit in this game. You actually improve land using this tile right here. Kind of like uh, Civ 6. Um, and uh, yeah, we're, we're actually just going to create a town. We're going to create a town right here. And Lincoln is its name. Nice. All right, scout unit has been made. We're going to use that to scout pretty far. What we're going to do with our warrior is I'm going to just actually bring him right here. Okay, this is actually a wonder, um, a like natural landmark that we can name ourselves, giving us exploration points. And right now we can only use exploration points to make scouts. Um, but it's actually very good to find these. If we find three, we can go to the Age of Heroes, which is um, which I love to do. I love going to the Age of Heroes because we can get really good generals that way. We'll go more detail if that does happen. But we do want to get our warriors consolidated right now as we get more uh, scouts and use the scouts for scouting. And I like to go to three scouts, as I mentioned before. I'm going to just attack this. I would normally kind of avoid this guy, but I'm going to attack him to show you guys what combat looks like. This is a one on one. <laughs> it looks a bit scuffed, I'll be honest. I like to just skip through. You can see. Boom, boom, boom. We traded a bit better. His unit is a bit worse than our unit, this barbarian warband unit, militia. Oh, we found another um, another tribe. We can choose our next technology, which I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with worker. It's going to give us clay pits, which can give us more worker points, but also it will give us base worker points, which I want to do right away so we can improve Chicago and make the most of our pops immediately. Another tribal camp here. Uh, we can actually spawn an archer. Nice. Now we have an archer unit and you can see that they stack right on top of each other. We can even get one more unit in there. We look to be in a pretty decent spot right, right now. And I did end up losing my guy here. You can even see the combat. He somehow died. Rest in peace. That's why I didn't want to attack. But now we know what it looks like and we can discover this landmark. We have found the landmark. We have found the Grand Canyon. Oh, very fitting for us as America. Why does it look like that though? And we get some exploration points and some other bonuses. And we 
need to find two more landmarks if we want to go to the Age of Heroes. And oh, we also found a Barbarian camp. Okay, now I wish I didn't lose my guy because then we could take them on. I mean, we can still take on the Barbarian camp with these guys because we have an Archer. Archer can shoot over walls. I just skipped right away there. That was weird. But uh, because we can shoot over walls, we can get into the Barbarian camp without destroying the walls. Our warrior, of course, did take some damage. Our militia unit. And... The Barbarian was suicidal. Um, uh, well, that was interesting. We actually see our first neutral nation. Uh, so there are like kind of like city-states in this game. However, there, as of right now, there's no way to interact with them how you would in games like um, Civ V, for example. Uh, the only thing that I, as far as I know, the only thing that you can do with city-states is conquer them, which I like doing because it's a great way to expand without having to use our government power to make um, to make settlers. Because that's how we make settlers. We make settlers by using government power, and it uses a pop. I'm going to... I don't like spamming settlers right away. What I like to do is I like to get to the peaceful revolution ASAP. Or not peaceful, the innovation here, the improvement point, all the bonuses here ASAP. Different players will have different styles. You, if you play this game, will probably have a different style. You might, what I play is probably not optimal. I've only got 30 hours in the game. And there we go. We've completed our first barb camp. We can get five culture or 50 wealth. I like to stack up some wealth here. So I'm going to get some money. Honestly, not really the best bonuses you can get. I mean, the culture could have been okay. And then we're going to go continue into our next tech. We're going to go with the farming so we can use those points. We just actually got our improvement points right here. We're going to make a hunting camp right here, which is going to give us meat, which is more food. More food in our homeland. It's going to make us grow even faster. Then here we could build a farm, wait for a farm, but I'm actually going to build a clay pit, which is going to give us production, as well as improvement points every turn, which is going to help us improve our cities even faster. And now we can see our pops. We got one pop working on the clay pit, one pop working on the hunting camp, and it's actually producing goods. We have clay goods and we have food, meat goods that we can use to make more complex things in the future. We can see our actually our city is growing pretty good here. More barbarians, more, more barbarians. They're really a nuisance, which is actually why I'm building another war band. I'm going to bring back these guys right here. They just ended up fighting another barbarian. I'm going to bring them back home and we're going to basically make like a small army. We're going to make a small army at home to go around clearing barbarian camps so we can get those really nice bonuses. Let's take it. Belo Horizonte. I think that's a Brazilian city. They're going to bring us to Brazil. But as you can see, there's no way for me to interact with them. They're just here. It's a city that we can essentially conquer and turn into our vassal. So many barbarians. And we found another barbarian camp. That's good. Once we have our armies together, we can go and clear those barbarian camps out. Uh, right now, I do want to get another scout because we did end up losing a scout unit. Actually, before we get the scout unit, I am going to build us a council. Oof, this is very expensive. 30 production. Scout, we'll do a scout and we can actually shift Q here. Scout, then council. And we can see actually, where's our third pop go? The third pop is right here. Do you want to get a farm here? More food means more pop growth. More pop growth means better cities and with that i could go here to get this so we can get archers but i'm gonna go age of bronze first so we can get the age two bonus age two and age four have bonuses uh and age six as the game progresses you can get these unique bonuses that basically builds your nation throughout the game it's a really cool aspect kind of reminds me of humankind i actually never played humankind uh but i know that in humankind you can also build your nation so every nation even though if you play the same nation every single time you can have a very unique experience every single time me personally i've found two that i really like and i'm going to be showcasing in this video there we go we're now into the next age thanks to egypt thank you egypt the age of bronze and he does get a bonus for being the first to get there and we're actually being attacked for barbarians in our town and you can see here even towns have a local population that defends them and we do need to go help them before they die because if we lose this town, we're going to lose a lot of land. This should be good. Almost killed him. Almost. We can bring these guys here and we can heal them so we can deal with this. And then keep running away with our scout. And we're actually going to progress here. Our scout was ambushed on multiple sides. We're now in the Age of Bronze ourselves. And because of that, we can actually choose... National Spirits. And you can see there's National Spirits on age 2, 4, 6, and 8. 
Um, and there's different bonuses we can go. Like, you can go mound builders. Um, and you can see, actually, that's why Egypt chose, because he's you don't see the bonus here. Um, and mound builders gives us, like, sanitation, which is important in bigger cities that we'll talk about later. Gives... Um, Gives the mound, a burial mound special building, uh, which gives culture. We're not going to do that. I'm very, like I said in the beginning of the video, we're going on a militaristic focus. We're going to rush down a bunch of AIs. I haven't found any AIs yet, which is a bit concerning. And we're going to go with the raiders. There's a bunch of stuff you can go here, guys. We're going to go with raiders. And you can even see I've been keeping some mil points just for this. This brings us to 41. We get 10 extra points because we're the first person to choose raiders. And we can pick the Raiders tech, which da 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 lets us pick, lets us get Raider units just by progressing. Each one of these gives us two Raiders, two Raiders, two Raiders, two Raiders. Um, we're going to start out by doing uh, Marauders, one War for XP from combat per unit. That's actually very massive. It's going to help us progress through our warfare a lot faster. We're actually really close to another one already. You can see right here that we're gaining one warfare per turn just from our city. Um, I'm not really sure what exactly is creating it just because it's our homeland. Oh, it's our capital city, so it produces warfare naturally. Um, but because we select that option, we already have two raiders that we can use to... Um, raid um and we're actually going to put these guys together here hopefully we can find those wonders those national wonders but we're gonna put these guys together right here we're gonna use these two to clear this over here and we're going to stack some raiders so we can conquer our first city keep exploring there's no auto explorer future but um i always manually explored my units that's just how i always played these kind of games i'm gonna go back and Complete defenses uh, here just so we can get access to the archer unit if we need it. Oh, and there we go. We found our first civilization. We found the Chinese. Yoink. And they actually found the mysterious jungle. We're going to go for the warfare bonus here. You can see also we're capped on innovation, which means that we have a 10% chance every turn right now to get a random innovation. And uh, since we did just get a bunch of Warfare XP, we're going to go for the zero well where a wealth, uh, wealth upkeep costs on raiders and spawn two more raiders. We're going to use these raiders over here to uh, fight these barbarians right here so we can get more Warfare XP. And there we go. We found another one uh, natural wonder, which is good. We just need to find one more here, chat. We're going to go into raiders again. Spawn. Uh, we're going to click this one. And we got even more raiders. We just got so many raiders. So, so many raiders. Let's clear these guys right here. These barbarians. You can see now that we have a kind of a comp. They become... Composition of your army gets more important as you progress. Holy moly, this guy's Giga Chad. A warlord. He's taking on my entire army. Look at how buff he is. I think we got him though. I think we got him. Come on, come on. Final blow, final blow. Yeah, he's dead. That does give us actually a considerable amount of warfare XP. Um, and we can, now that we've done with that, we're gonna go to Belo Horizonte, attack this free city. We can go for it. The city, of course, has a palisade wall. We have no archers, so we do have to take down the wall first. <laughs> this attack animation is funny, dude. We can't run. Almost there. One more unit, and we would have won the, the, won the day, won the battle. We can see what age they're in. We can see how many cities they have. We can see Zulu's the only one with a city. Weirdly enough. We're playing on the medium difficulty here. I think I'm already ready to play the next difficulty up. But for the sake of this video, we'll stay on medium. Because I want to show you guys a very clean, beautiful victory. But if you want to see more gameplay of this, let me know. And we can definitely play on the hardest difficulty and see how that goes. Okay, we can now continue our raid. Shadow Legends. Not sponsored, by the way. Um, and complete the destruction of the city. Which we've done. And we have two options. We can either bring the population to our home city. Get two populations in Chicago. Which will create chaos. Or we can go to just make them a vassal in our territory. Um, Belo Horizonte, I am going to make you a vassal. That's going to give us our second region. And speaking of regions, we're going to actually spawn a settler. Settlers do have their own defensive bonuses. We can spawn them here in our city. And we can move them right away. And we are going to move to right here. I think the city right here would be good. 
We do want a city like over here, build some towns like this, which will connect these two cities, then maybe a city here. Then we can connect all of these cities together with pretty, pretty nicely. We're going to make our next city Seattle. Okay, Chicago, Belo, Belo Horizonte, and Seattle. Okay, there you go. We can see the Zulu. They're sending us warning. I suggest you send your units elsewhere. What do we do with these cities? Like, we can't choose what they are. They're vassals, right? You can see here, this is even a vassal. It's giving us some bonuses, giving us very small bonuses, um, unless they become prosperous, which you can see right here, prosperity percentage. Um, they give very small bonuses. We can make these bonuses bigger with government type later in the game. We'll talk about that later, and we'll talk about my favorite government type later as well. Um, but we can integrate them once we reach a certain amount of turns. We can integrate them using our government power. So once again, getting government buildings can make integration and expanding faster. But keep in mind, every city that we integrate and have a vassal will make our culture and our research more expensive. Sad. Age of Iron. That means that we don't get the Age of Heroes. Maybe we'll show it in another video. Who knows? Maybe this video will do super good and I do more millennial videos. Or maybe I just do more millennial videos just because I enjoy the game. Who knows, chat? Who knows? I don't read the future. And we've entered a new age, which gives us gold and iron resources, um, gives us art bonuses, and also gives us a new government type. Speaking of the Zulu, though, it's time to declare hostilities. Declaring hostilities basically means that we can attack their units in neutral territory. And it also means in three turns, we can declare war, which is exactly what we want to do, of course, because the Zulu are too close to us, which means they deserve to die. We're ready for a new government. And we have a choice between a kingdom. A kingdom, we can see here, a kingdoms are built on the back of vassals. They expand their kingdom with cheaper settlers, envoys, and spears. And can generate resources off the back of its new vassals at the cost of their prosperity. Or we can do an imperial dynasty, which focuses on our capital. Bonuses... There's a bunch of bonuses to our capital. I personally like going with the Imperial Dynasty. Yes, we're America, the great American Imperial Dynasty. George Washington and his blessed, uh, his blessed bloodline will take us to the future. And actually, we can construct the palace in our capital, which we will do, which gives us bonuses on our capital. You can see our capital is actually getting some really nice bonuses here and is growing pretty nicely while being no unrest, which is good. These, these Zulu are going to be so dead. And we can actually spawn more raiders here. We can get them here and then we can put them on boats. Get on the boats and boom. We're now surrounding his city. Dune Shaka will be dead. And we can actually see his power compared to ours. We have more power. We are the more powerful one here. And now it's time to destroy Shaka. Declare war. Time for you to go. Shaka. Time for you to go home. By home I mean into the grave. You can see the city has no walls. It should be very easy. We've already looted it. It's dead. And we can go into here and attack. But this is going to be harder to attack here because there is a walls. But we did take out the walls. That's pretty good. One thing we can do is we can retreat the weak guys. Put a stronger guy in there. Retreat the weak guy. So he can heal outside of the borders. Put a stronger guy in. And then attack. Walls are down. City is almost down. The end of Shaka is coming. Well, not really, because he still has one more. Still one more city left somewhere. There we go. We found Shaka's last city. Time to die, Zulu. And the last city of the Zulus. Gonna go down here. And there we go. Shaka, Zulu is dead. And all of his units turn into barbarians, which we can go and wipe. And there we go. A chaos event, Barbarian Resurgence. The last great Barbarian King has come to negotiate with the United States. He is the last of his kind and will not bend the knee. What should have we done with him? We should, ex if we accept, two Barbarian Warlords at each region for all nations. Uh, that's just means for me. I don't know why it says all nations. It doesn't spawn it for my enemies. That means that I'll get two Barbarians here, two Barbarians here, two Barbarians here, two Barbarians here, two Barbarians here. This city will probably be fine, but all my other cities are probably going to get conquered by Barbarians and turn into these kind of cities. Or we can pay him money, which is what we're going to do. We're going to burn 450 uh, ducats, cash, gold, whatever you want to call it. And he is gone. We get chaos again. Our chaos does decrease. But since we've been conquering so much, our chaos is still growing quite significantly. There we go. We've completed our raiders tree as well uh, because we do have enough raiders to complete this 15 out of 10. We get social fabric points, which start in age five. 
as well as warfare XP gained monthly. So now we're just gaining warfare XP, which is really nice. Time to take down Pompeii. Almost got it. Another vassal added to our nation. We're now pretty strong. We're actually really strong already, which is good. It's good. There's more cities to conquer down here, which we will go for. Yeah, we're just going to conquer as much as we can. And then we'll fill out the rest with our own cities. With our own uh, guys and, uh, you know, call influence, growth. Right now, we're just playing very aggressive. And I told you guys right from the beginning of the video, we're going to play very aggressive. And we can continue our growth here with a culture power. We can actually build a town right here. You can build a town any tile, one tile away. Of course, if Seattle was bigger, let's, for example, Chicago, if we had another town limit, which we can reach by getting infrastructure, we could build a town like here. We could build a town here. Anywhere, one tile outside of our region, we can build a town. Do right here, but let's just make sure there's more resources. I actually want to build a town going this way. Savannah. Now that we're done with our warfare tree, what I do like to do is I want to stack up because on the fourth age, there's going to be... I'm going to go for another warfare thing. We're just conquering everyone. I'm a mad lad that likes to conquer. What we can do also is we can make some more uh, raiders. We can actually just spawn a whole army of raiders right here. And we can just continue our conquest of the city-states that are around us. Growing and being so aggressive. That's just the strategy that I'm doing here. Super, super aggressive play style. Um, but I've been spamming making raiders. We're going to use those to kill the Germans now. Main hostile and now we declare war. And next war against Germany. More war. War. Never changes. This one should be a quick conquest. Yep, it's our city. Looted. Looted and booted. Over 10 pops. We now need to start worrying about another aspect. So below five pops, it's just food. After five pops, you have to worry about housing. After 10 pops, you have to worry about sanitation. So we're going to make a midden. This is basically like a garbage pit for the city. I I've been playing a lot with the Raiders. And um, since I am live streaming right now, a Twitch chatter. By the way, I'm talking because this is going to be a YouTube video. Um, uh... A Twitch chatter says Raiders kind of set up the game. You can really snowball really hard using Raiders as we have shown so far. We're now, you know, we're pushing uh, Germany now with more Raiders. We've already killed one Civ. But you kind of do set up the game to be focused around domination and troops. And you can see we're kind of lacking in the tech department, in the city department, in the government department. We're lacking. But I think overall, um, it's just really strong. It's just really strong. Going for raiders is really strong. You can actually see what the city has by zooming into it. You can see that it has a palace. It has a council building. And I don't recognize anything else. The more that I play the game, the more I get addicted to it. At first, it wasn't very visually appealing. I'm going to just pay here. There's some aspects that I do not like. Like, for example, I do not like the chaos events. Uh, before you really understand chaos, you kind of use your money stupidly. And you kind of just like rush buildings and stuff because it's relatively cheap compared to the amount of money you can get. Uh, the problem though, the problem with the, the chaos, well, at first, uh, some that's actually an aspect of the game that I don't like, the chaos. But overall, the more I play this game, the more I get addicted to it and the more I see the uniqueness of the game and less of the sameness that you see in other 4X games like Civilization. Another city down. Yeah, there's no walls. There's no city defenses. Should be another easy city conquest. Yeah, th that's the last city for Germany. Unfortunately, our closest enemies are a bit far away from us, but that's not going to stop us from conquering them. Let's go. Do we kill Germany here? We use Force March on our healthy stack. Yeah, we got it. Boom. Germany eliminated. That's another player we've killed. Who's our next target? I'm gigantic. I am actually gigantic. But we got to keep this war train going, chat. Who's our next target? But yeah, the, uh, right now we just found another nation. We found China. We've already defeated two AIs. We got five more AIs to go. Here's China. Here is Sweden. Um, there up here, yellow is... We can click this right here. Yellow is Egypt. Yellow is Egypt. Green is France. So that's one, two, three, four. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there should be uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two down, one, two, three, four, five. So I don't know where the Aztecs are. That's the only AI that I don't know where they are on the map. But let's prepare the boys chat and we're going to start our next invasion, which is going to be our invasion of the Chinese. Age of Plague. No! Why? Why AI? Why? They're going to put us into a bad age. I could have stopped this. I still can't stop this. I still can't stop this. Age of Kings. Then we use Eureka on the culture bonus. Time to kill another AI. Let's go. Go for Toda first because it seems pretty open. Oof. That's it. Easy conquest. Easy conquest. Oh, I think this is their capital. I don't think we have enough to take this. Let's go. Yeah, I don't think we have enough. Maybe. No, actually, I think we do have enough. We take Shanghai now. I think we got it. We got it. Shanghai is down. The Chinese capital is ours. <gasps> they have hoplites. No, they have Spartans. Wait, what? Chinese Spartans. <laughs> Chinese Spartans versus American hoplites. That's only in uh, millennia, guys. Oh, they're wrecking us. Oh, China's dead. I'm going to go for cons, guys. Someone went for machinery already. Wait, who? Who went for machinery? You can go for explorers. Explore the world. Explorers seek to chart the entire globe. Crusades. Crusades seek to conquer other nations' religious birthplace. Doing so grants a crusade a boost to their religion spread and culture bonus. Or we can go cons, which is what I want to do. Uh, under the leadership of a fearsome Khan, this nation of powerful mountain warriors can spawn and create and recruit barbarians. Shogunate machinery. Machinists create wondrous inventions. Shogunates. You can make samurais. Spice merchants. Money. Chivalry. Vassals. Oh, wow. That's insane pa vassal growth. But I produce no art, so that I'll never finish this. Same thing with theologians. Who's this guy? We're gonna go with cons, chat. The great cons. Bond horse archers. And then so it begins. A new age. The age of cons. Play the Mongolian throat singing. Yeah, we're a horde USA. <laughs> Raider horde USA. Con spirit gives us a con that lives for a specific amount of time, which we can give him different bonuses, such as more damage, as well as the ability to create horse archers, one of the most OP units in the game. Also got an innovation special unit of the hoplite. So we're America with con raiders, horse archers, and hoplites. With this new age though, we can now find a religion. Create a new religion in Capital City. And our religion in Chicago. Custom religion. Cheese, cheeseburger. Big Mac Whopper. And our religious building is called McDonald's. We can now build McDonald's in all our cities. The religion of America, fast food. Look at our hostilities. Holy smokes, I'm way stronger than this guy. Oh my god, am I way stronger than everyone? I know I'm stronger than, but... Yeah, there's no AI that can contest me right now. It's time to declare war. They did okay, but we were attacking on hills, so we didn't get our bonus. Plus, they had a leader, which was giving them a tactical advantage. We're not occupying it yet. If we occupy their work tiles, we can stop them from being able to work certain tiles. But we're not doing that. We're healing up. And once we're healed, we're going to push. I think this is their capital. I can't see any other cities that could be bigger than this. How many regions does he have? He has two regions. So he has this region and somewhere else. These are vassals. You can tell by the borders. Okay, we've bro we broke something. Oh, we got their capital. And that's Egypt dead. Their hostilities. 
Three AIs are left. Time to buff our horse archers even more. Four attack, four defense. France. He has two regions left. One of them being Paris. Wait, so you're telling me Paris has stone walls, but the capital... I mean, I guess this was truly their capital all along. Even though it had less pops and it's not their first city. But everyone will be entering the Age of Conquest, and that is a victory age, which means next turn we can win. I mean, next age we can win the game. And then that's it. We've won our first game of Millennia. Well, first game that I've recorded. I can upgrade. I can upgrade my McDonald's into a large McDonald's. Don't mind if I do. Yes. And that's France dead. Two more AIs left. There's Sweden and the Aztecs. Think I got horse archers like what, 15 turns ago? We already conquered all of this of the map. And this is all that's left. We were almost about to win. And the age of conquest, the United States. This age started, declares war on all other nations and closes diplomatic relations. Peace cannot be declared during this age. After one third of the nations have crumbled, victory is achieved by having 2x more power than the next strongest nation. I won? Did I already won? I think I already won. But a chatter, um, now that we're nearing the end, we can start talking about like our final thoughts. A chatter gives a really good point. Axioms of Dominion, a Twitch chatter that I have here. I did live stream this on my Twitch stream. Check me out, twitch.tv slash absolute habibi. You f I agree with this very heavily. Millennia is a civ like designed game to appeal to EU4 players or grand strategy players or paradox players in general. The gameplay loop does have aspects that are very similar to grand strategy games that Paradox has made in the past that are different and unique to Civ games. Also, army comp is a thing in this game. That's not really like much of a thing in other games, other 4X games. Uh, but since you have these army stacks, army comp is really good. Uh, you have different types of units. Line versus, versus cavalry versus... Um, Versus, I'm forgetting the other one. But overall, I think that this game does have a lot of unique things that makes it worthwhile to check out. Versus other 4X games like Sid Meier's Civilization. Yes, it does share a lot of things with Sid Meier's Civilization. But literally every 4X game that isn't Civilization is going to have similar similarities with Civilization. I really enjoy actually the city management in this game. I... Unrest is a bit annoying, but you know, once you learn how to deal with unrest, like having garrisons, having uh, building the unrest buildings, um, unrest isn't that big of a deal. Dealing with the chaos, yes, chaos actually is probably my least favorite mechanic of this game, but once you know how to deal with it, it's just stockpile money. Hey, you're doing a lot of wars, you need stockpile money to deal with chaos events. Yeah, sometimes you need to take some debuffs because chaos events. Um, but yeah, you have the, the city building is honestly really cool. As the game progresses, unfortunately, since this game ended so quickly, um, we've won so fast. We didn't really go into the nitty gritty of min maxing city building, which is what I want to do in my next game. I want to play a tall game where we focus on trying to get into the other ages and winning the game, not through conquest. I don't want to win my next game through conquest. I want to do the other victory types that exist in this game. But doing the city management in this game is actually a lot of fun trying to get the different resources like for example how we did the religious scribes and the religious scribes require paper so we needed to make paper and to get paper we need wood so we need wood in that city and then what you can do is you can specialize cities and then do domestic importing import goods from one city to the other city it brings in things from humankind ages the age bonus is very reminiscent of uh humankind and the decision making is very reminiscent of old world i would definitely agree with that my biggest gripe though with this game is chaos. Yes, you only get chaos if you conquer. So if you're not conquering, you don't get chaos. But there should be other ways to deal with chaos that isn't just buy it out. Or the chaos events shouldn't be like every single city gets um, three barbarian units spawning in it. That happened to me in my first playthrough and I didn't have money to buy it out. And I just lost the game. Well, I was new to the game, so I didn't really understand chaos yet. But I lost the game because um, the barbarians conquered all my cities before I can do anything to react to it. GG, guys. We have won.
Look upon thine works, ye mighty in despair. In a stroke of military genius, you and your allies have become the victors. Your nation is immortalized as one who took part in the historical military triumph, the fearsome nation of the United States. So, in this video, I showed you guys one of the easiest ways to win the game. Raiders, cons, and just conquer the entire world as fast as possible. There is still a lot of aspects of this game that we didn't cover, and there's so many national spirits that you can combine and do to make your campaign unique and different from the previous one. As a matter of fact, after playing this one, I immediately started another campaign where I focused on tall gameplay and not conquest, and focusing on mound builders as well as machinery. Combat does look a bit goofy in this game, and for some reason rebels look like ninjas, but the idea behind the way it works and having to put thought into compositions is a step in the right direction. However, as I demonstrated in this video, there are units in the game that as they stand are a bit overtuned, like the raiders and horse archers, where I didn't think about composition at all and just spammed the one unit. XP in this game kind of works like mana and other paradox titles, which some may not like. However, there's so many ways to get the XP, and it's not RNG based like EU4 and rulers. You can build buildings that give the XP and spirits tend to give you a way to get more XP of the type you need to progress in them. And although I feel like Raiders is a spirit that you could take almost in every single game, the other ones such as Mound Builders and Seafarers tend to need you to have certain types of spawns to get the most out of them. And I feel like in most games, you're going to be choosing your spirit based off of the start that you have and the terrain around your homeland, rather than just going in with a preconceived plan in your head, which to me, I really enjoy and really like. Another really great thing about this game is the huge difference between playing tall and playing wide. As demonstrated, you can min-max 2-3 cities and be really powerful with insane production, but you can also go super wide and go for Vassal Prosperity where your cities auto-build and auto-improve, giving huge amounts of resources throughout the game. Listen to this. Listen, listen, listen. Get ready for your ears. Oh, my ears. Oh my god. What the sound is is the vassals automatically improving stuff by themselves. One thing I don't like though, is that the AI can be really aggressive at times. And it sometimes doesn't really matter what their personality type is. They just will always be aggressive. And it's something to consider as you play the game, as the AI, if they think they're stronger than you and they're next to you, they will declare war on you. So you have to be preemptive and build lots of units. There's also a severe lack of diplomatic options, and there's no way to end wars outside of using your culture bonus or by just being stronger and them accepting a white piece. No way to sweeten the deal or enforce demands or anything like that. And as far as I can tell, there's no way to trade outside of using a merchant or using external imports. I see that over time that this will get tweaked and they're already tweaking the game and a patch as I am uploading this video has already been released to improve the game, which is very good from the developers. But if you're looking for a game to delve a lot of hours in for a not AAA price right now, I think it's selling for 40 US dollars, which in America is pretty good, but I don't know if they have regional pricing. If not, that's kind of bad. But if you're looking for a game to delve a lot of hours in, this game could be it as there's so many different play styles. And even though I'm right now at 40 hours in, I've only scratched the surface when it comes to the national spirits. I still want to try all of the openers and to get a better idea of the game, but doing that is going to take a lot of hours, which I am genuinely excited for. I do genuinely enjoy the level of min-max when it comes to region management in this game, which I know some people might find overwhelming since you have to think about a lot of aspects to make the perfect regions, and you might be sitting for 10 minutes on one turn trying to figure out the best way to set up your region. And to make a region flourish, you need to consider your food, your housing, your sanitation, religion, luxury goods, and eventually electricity and social media. And there's even more after that. And if you do it right, you're rewarded greatly for doing so, which I love. And if you do spend the time thinking it out, you can end up with 30 pop cities, giving 200 production by turn 100, where you're building everything in one turn. I do have to admit though, for 2024, the visuals are pretty lacking and it looks closer to even Civ 4, not even Civ 5, when it comes to the visual graphics of the game. Is that something I personally care about? Not really, dude. My favorite game is Europa Universalis 4, which is literally just a map. 
Overall rating of this game is 7.6 out of 10. I think this game is a min-maxer's heaven, but it's not really the game for everyone out there. It's not a mass appeal game, but I think that if you are a person that likes to sit and think about every decision and min-max really well, I think you will really enjoy this in the 4x genre. And I do think that it does a lot of things well, and I'm excited for the future of this game. And even in the game state that it is right now, I do not think that it's a hollow game that requires DLC right now. I think you can get easily get hundreds of hours out of this game right now as the game stands. But it is lacking in some aspects. The chaos mechanic needs to be rethought, or at least give us other ways to deal with it. Besides that, this is my genuine, honest rating. I hope you guys enjoyed the vis this video, and I will be releasing more Millennia content in the future. Thank you, my patrons, Mason Andruska, Hardbam, Chogos, RVR, Feels, Djex, Nexos, Buttermilk Jesus, Zerovia, Endless Night, Fabulous Nail, Beyond, Tonix, Colcarp, Lawfer, Trevor Kosman, Diane Mason, Daniel Lubsix, and Shane Altier. If you want to directly support me, you can using my Patreon link down in the description. You get special benefits like getting a special Discord role, getting high priority in my Discord events and my EU4 MPs, as well as getting uh, my friendship on Steam. So check that out. Link is in the description.